All right, in this video, we're going to talk about optical flow in OpenCV using Python. So we will start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we will see how we can track all these points here on the right, and as well as another example that we'll see at the very end. So what is optical flow? Optical flow is used to estimate the motion of objects between two consecutive frames. And we have what's called a dense optical flow, which will uh, look at every pixel inside the image. So that's using this method called Ganar uh, Farnabak. And then we have a sparse optical flow, which will use only the features, which we'll see in Lucas Kanade. Okay, so why do we need optical flow? It's good for motion analysis, object tracking, gesture recognition, navigation, and so on. So here we're implementing an example of tracking points in this video of me kayaking. So how does optical flow work? So with Lucas Kanade, the way it works is you have a pixel intensity, and here we're looking at a function of time. And we're saying that the pixel location and the next pixel location at a new time is about the same. So we can express each pixel with the partial derivatives, uh, which we call ix, iy, it and the velocities, vx and vy. So from there, you could write a system of equations, as we can see here. So these are all of our points. And then for all of our points, we could set it up into a ax equals b type of matrix. In this case, we're using b for velocities. So you just um, plug it into your favorite solver, and then you could find out what the velocities are. So that's the general idea. And then for Gunnar uh, Farnabak, the way this works is uh, you approximate the neighboring pixels with a polynomial equation as a function of the displacement. So each point, you could predict it as a polynomial equation. And then you could find the coefficients of the polynomial to determine the displacement. So the general form is going to be of this form. So you can see it's a quadratic uh, AX transpose AX. That's typically a quadratic form. So if you expand it out, you'll get some equation. And the idea is. I won't go too much into the details, but the idea is you have equations that describe each point, and you have some displacement d. And you do some rigorous math, and then you find out what the d is. And this is a general idea, but in terms of practice, they have other uh, methods of implementation. Okay, But the general idea is solving a system of equations. And here, we're finding the displacements for each point in our image. Okay, So let's jump into the coding example. OK, so here we have our optical flow program. So here we import the modules that we need. And then we read in the image with the kayaking uh, video that we have. And then what you want to do first is set up your Shitomashi corners parameter, which I talked about in one of my previous videos. And here we have our Lucas Kanade parameters that we will set. So here we have a window size, the max level. So if we look at our. Uh, Lucas Kanade, right? We have um, the different things that's new here is the max level, right? So here we have, um, yeah, here we have the max level, which will be like how many levels for the pyramid. And then we have our criteria that we'll use. So this criteria here is similar to the different criteria that we've seen before. And then that is the your stopping method, if it's based off of the error or the max iteration. And then you have a max iteration you specify, and then also a float for min error. Okay, So your window size is going to be the size that you're going to be searching. And then to see the different points and how they change over time, we're going to use random colors. Okay, So that just makes it easier to see how it's changing over time. And then here we have, uh, we're reading and we're going to find the features to track now. So we read in our first image, and then we convert it to grayscale. And then we find the good corners using the Shitomashi parameters. And then this will give us all the corners. And from there, we could create a mask based off of our uh, frame. Okay, So we're going to loop through each video frame here. So here we get the frame that we're looking at. And then the next step is we convert it to grayscale. Then we find, we run the algorithm, uh, the calc optical flow PYR uh, LK. So this will calculate your optical flow for a sparse feature set. 
So this will return um, here. We have the next points, which I call uh, corners cur, and then the status if it was found or not. And then error we are not using right now. So this will find all the the new corners that it found in the next frame or the current frame that we're looking at. Okay. So then if the corners is not none, what we want to do is uh, we have our corners cur. So this tells us the status. So one if feature match found between the two images and then zero otherwise. So what this tells us is we want to get all the corners that had a match. Okay, so then here we're gonna store our current match and then our previous match into these two. And then we're gonna go through both of them and then see what that is. Okay, so we have a corners current match and the previous match, and then from there. Uh, what we want to do is find the x and y coordinates, and then we're going to draw a line connecting the previous and current coordinates. Okay, so that's what this does. And then each frame, we're going to draw a circle, and then the circle will be the different colors that we have. And then here we add together the, the things that we drew as well as the previous frame, and then this will be our new image. Okay, so now that we added everything, we could plot each frame one frame at a time, and then we will update our previous with our current and then repeat the process. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see um, all these points here are being tracked as we want. So that's all looking pretty good. And you can see all the curvature that's happening is how this is pretty much the motion of the camera that you're seeing. And then this blue one here moves a lot because that's the actual kayak that's moving. So let me play that again for those that uh, want to see more detail. So you can see, right, you have all these points here. What you want to pay attention to is this one will have the most movement, or one of the most, because this one is a kayak here. So it's going um, all over the place. OK. So next up is we have our um we have we have our other method okay so this one is our dense optical flow so what this one will do let me just comment this one out so with the dense optical flow um, we're going to read in the image as usual and then we're going to prepare the hsv um, frame here so the hsv will do a video capture so we're going to get the HSV values and then set the last or the middle one here, the one, which is the second. You have 0, 1, 2. So we're going to set the middle one to 255. And this will just make everything dark, essentially. So this here is while true. So we read in the current frame, and then we convert our color into grayscale. And then we pass it into the Farnaback method. So what this one does, what's new about this is um, we want to pass in the previous image and then the next image and then the flow. So flow here is set as none. We're just using the output here. And then we have the levels. It's a number of pyramids that we have, which we pass in here as three. And then our window size, the averaging window. So it does a little bit of blurring for us. And then the number of iterations we have is three. And then poly n is the size of our pixel neighborhood. So that you typically want to choose five or seven. And then the poly sigma here, we use 1.2. So um, you could play around with these different values. But typically, n equals five, you could use that, or uh, 1.5. So I played around with it. And you could kind of see how much that changes. And then the flags, you have two options. You have uh, use initial flow or then the Carnaback Gaussian, so that's the one we're using. So this one uses a Gaussian window instead of a box filter. So Gaussian window will have a little bit more uh, better transition smoothing than a box filter. So then from there, we take the flow. The flow we see here is a m by n by 3 image. So we will take the magnitude and angle based off of the first two channels of um, the flow image, and then use a cart to polar to get our magnitude and angle. Okay, so then from there, we're going to convert our angle into um, degrees. That's why we're multiplying it by 180. 
And then we are going to normalize the magnitude to 0 and 255. And then we convert it back to BGR here. And then we plot our image. Okay, So if we run this program, we will see the points these are, this is the dense optical flow, as we said. So if you look here, these are all the points that's changing over time. And then some of the background, because it's further away, it's not changing as much. That's why you see black in those areas. OK, so if you look closely, you can kind of see the kayak uh, paddle here moving. That's the main part with the most motion. So um, you can see those colors are a little bit different from the rest. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.